you ready to chase him? Come on, are you ready to go after him? Mark chapter 10. You should have it there. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Do you have it? Say amen. Now they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Roboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we are going to get lessons from a blind man. This morning I want to talk about relentless faith engaging in the invisible. Engaging in the invisible. Bartimaeus, well, in the original language, Bar Timaeus means son of Timaeus. Bartimaeus said a prayer, the greatest prayer we could ever say. The greatest prayer we could ever, it's not a lot of words and how good it might sound or, or saying the right things. He, he said the greatest prayer that any of us could ever say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Whatever change that is needed in my life, I know I can't do it. I'm, I'm incapable of doing it on my own. Have mercy on me and help me and change me. That's the greatest prayer that you'll ever say in your life. See, faith is putting our limitations in the hands of the unlimited. That's all it is. Our limitations. How many are? You're, we're limited. Come on, somebody. See, the hardest choice that we will ever face and decision that we'll ever make is either we're going to give up the fight of faith or we're going to continue to fight. Can you get an amen? Regardless of what the, re, uh, the results might tell us or might end up. Regardless. We have to continue to, to stand on our faith and trust God by faith. See, life is full of faith choices this morning. As we pursue God... And his will for our future. See, we'll, we will come to many moments where your faith will be tested. Can you get an amen? Some of you have been tested and you will continue to be tested. But here's the question. Will you continue by faith? Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, will you continue? By faith. Great coach John Wooden said this. There's a choice you have to make in everything that you do. So keep in mind in the end that the choice that you make makes you. It makes you. I love this great story about Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. He engaged in the invisible. See, blindness, if you look it up, it talks about lack of perception. Or lack of awareness or judgment or even ignorance or loss of useful sight. Visually impaired or handicapped and visually challenged. When you talk about blindness, there's a lot of different definitions that we see. But we see 
Bar, uh, blind Bartimaeus as being able to get through his physical limitations. Can I get an amen? Of being blind. See, be, even though he was blind, he still engaged. Even though he couldn't see, he still engaged. Even though it didn't, he was blinded by his physical condition, that didn't stop him from crying out to Jesus. Can I get an amen? See, the first thing that we see about blind Bartimaeus, number one, he eliminated the physical world. That's what he did. He only operated in the spiritual world. He couldn't see. Say, he couldn't see. See, blindness became an asset rather than a defect. There was a benefit from him being blind. It was a physical barrier. But he had no concern of anything physical because he only operated in the spiritual. Can I get an amen? See, when they tried to silence him, they tried to tell him to be quiet. It had no concern to him because he couldn't see who was talking to him anyway. Can I get an amen? There's something special about that. Because people are going to start, uh, they're going to try to stop you. Can I get an amen? They're going to actually try to make you be quiet. Are we concerned by those that are trying to silence us? Trying to be a roadblock, trying, are we concerned, right, that they're in our way? See, you know what faith does? Faith moves barriers. Say it moves barriers. See, when you have faith, it silences the silencers. That's what it does. It says, move. Get out of my way. Somebody need to say that this morning. Say, move. Get out the way. Hello, somebody. Sometimes we need to tell somebody that in our life. We need to tell the enemy that in our life. Just move and get out of the way because I got to have some more faith. I'm engaging in the invisible. It might not look too good, but I'm still engaging. Can I get an amen? Many warned him. They said, be quiet. But the Bible says that he cried out all the more. It says Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Isn't that powerful? Because the second thing that happens when you engage in the invisible, it commands your calling. The faith of Bartimaeus was so relentless that Jesus stood still, stopped what he was doing on his way, took notice of this blind man that couldn't even see him, took notice of him, stopped what he was doing, and actually told those that were trying to shut him up to go get him because I'm calling him. Come on, that's a good place to clap this morning because some of your silencers are going to be the ones, oh, come on now. They're going to be the ones having to call you. See, we must refuse to allow people, situations, roadblocks, circumstances, our own personal issues. Oh, we don't got issues? Am I the only one with some issues this morning? To stop us. The Bible says he stopped, commanded him to be called. See, too many people are just sitting around waiting for God to call you. And God is saying this morning, get some faith. Get some relentless faith. God is looking for those that are relentless about their faith. That are not listening to the naysayers. That, that are not stuck on their own personal issues. That understand that my faith will bring my calling. Faith will command your calling on your life. See, then God will call you. But you got to have some faith. You got to have some faith. See, what it does, it moves your calling forward. It brings your calling to the light. So even others, that those that don't want you operating in your calling, they have no choice 
Come on, somebody. How many of you like that this morning? When those don't have any, they don't have no choice but to allow you to watch and see what God will do in your life and through your life. Show me, look at you're waiting. I don't know what you're waiting for this morning. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. What are you waiting for? Operate by faith. Move by faith. Have some relentless faith. Go after him like you have never went after him before in your life. Right? Make yourself, even if you got to be that blind Bartimaeus and say, Lord, have mercy on me. That's the beginning of operating in your calling. That's, that's the first step where God will, will use your life from that moment on. Can I get an Amen. So they, 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 blind, they called the blind men, and they said all of a sudden their, 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 their attitude changed. Come on, somebody. They said, oh, be of good cheer. Now they want to be friends. Come on, somebody. Be of good cheer, brother. They're calling you. He's calling you. And the Bible said, Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. I love the scriptures. We're learning from a blind man this morning. The Bible says he threw aside his garment. You know what that means? He was willing to give up what was comfortable. Hmm. Oh, it's going to get good this morning. Come on, somebody. Because we don't like giving up comfortable things. Some of us are a little too comfortable. Oh, am I talking to myself this morning? A little too comfortable. See, I love it because in those times, and even today, throwing aside your clothing for a person that had very little to begin with is a big issue. I mean, just... My personal story, I could tell you, some of you don't know, I was homeless for a while. Some of you don't even know. I was homeless. It, was, it wasn't that long. It was a couple months, but I was homeless. And I hung with the homeless. And those of you that have been homeless, that know what I'm talking about, understand that when you're homeless, the little that you have means everything to you. The little that you have. See, in biblical times, it was worse because clothing... Was, was a very valuable commodity, actually, because nothing was mass-produced. Clothes at that time were, were very, very expensive, which meant that most people in those days only had a limited wardrobe. For that reason, it was a serious thing to throw aside your garment, or in some scripture says, they tore their clothes. You guys ever heard them say that in the Bible? Means they're taking it off or getting rid of it. They were showing just how upset they felt inside. How desperate they were that they were willing to give up what they love. That they were willing to take off the old garments and go after Jesus. To come to Jesus naked. Symbolizing, I come with nothing, Lord. And I come to you because what has been holding me back, I throw it aside. Come on. Somebody say, throw it aside. Get rid of it. Set it aside. Whatever that is that's holding you back. Whatever that is that's keeping you from getting closer to God or getting your faith to another level. You got to learn how to get rid of it this morning. You got to put it aside and never go back and get it again. How desperate are you this morning? What are them things that are keeping your faith stuck or down? Or, or, or it seems like you're losing faith rather than gaining faith. Coming in that manner, he is saying, Jesus, I'm willing to leave what I possess and love to come to you when you call me. Are you willing to leave what you love and come to him when he calls you? This morning, he's calling you. But are you willing to let that thing go? Oh, the lessons of a blind man this morning. Come on, somebody. But why? Listen, why was he able to walk through these barriers? Why? Why was he able to engage 
in the invisible. And I talked a little bit about it, but I'm going to focus on this. You know why? Because he lived in an invisible world every day. He had something on us. Come on, somebody. He lived in an invisible world every day. He woke up. He couldn't see. He had a daily engagement with the spiritual world. See, the physical world versus the spiritual world. Barnabas had some faith because he couldn't see anyway. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, spiritual hosts and rulers of the darkness of this age, right? Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That's the battle that we're facing every day, church. You're facing that every day. Do you know you face that every day? That's why you feel the way you feel. That's why there's a battle right now going on that, 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 that the spirit is trying to win, but the flesh is saying no. Come on, somebody. God is trying to speak, but something else is saying no. What is it? The powers that we fight against on a daily basis, they're not, visi they're not visible with the physical eye. They're visible, right, with the spiritual eye. If you're spiritual, you're going to see it. You're going to know it. You're going to feel it. You're going to sense it. Why do I feel this way? Why can't I get it right? Why is it so difficult to me to have faith? Right? How do I know what it is? You know what it is? I'm going to give it to you. Anything that's getting in your way, anything that's getting in your way to serve God completely, to have some faith, or anything that's stopping you from moving closer to God and your calling, you know has been put there by Satan. Anything. You know what I'm talking about. That thing. Don't look at me like that, like I'm crazy. You know what I mean? That thing. Somebody say that thing. You know what that thing is? The enemy has placed that there. In the spiritual. It's a, some, sometimes it's a physical. Sometimes it's a spiritual. But it's there. Say it's there. Tell your neighbor, it's there. Say I see it. It's there. See, is your physical world blinding you from operating in the spiritual world? You got to get rid of them things that are stopping you this morning. It could be anything. It could be that job. It could be that person. It could be that relationship. Hello. It could be negative people in your life. Some people that right now, you're going to leave church uh, with faith. You're going to leave church on fire. And you're going to leave uh, uh, just, man, I got so much faith. I just left Victory Outreach. Right? I feel so good. And you're going to go right into a house. That's going to steal all your faith away. Why do you live there? Hallelujah. Oh, because those are my people. Well, your people should be sitting here next to you this morning hearing about faith engaging in the invisible because if they're the ones that's, that are, are hindering you, maybe you need some new I, I know for me, man, I, I had to separate myself. Man, I, I, Pastor Rick would preach about faith, and I leave church fired up, man, and I go and I go into you know a family event or something like that. I see family, and all of a sudden, man, they're negative. They talk down, you know, and they even talk about the church. Oh, it was on then. Come on, somebody. Do you listen or do you actually walk away? And, you know, if somebody talks about my pastor, it's on. Do you feel that way? Do you feel that way? Somebody talks about your church. Come on, somebody. This is where we were saved. This is where Jesus rescued us. God used victory outreach to restore my life, to transform my life, that I can get some faith, that people can preach to me about faith, that my faith can grow. 
how dare you how dare you talk about what God has done through this ministry or do you just listen and every week it's a jump start come on somebody get some faith get, tell your neighbor get some faith we need faith remember we have to create a daily engagement, an appointment with the spiritual world. See, the, the desire and hunger for what's spiritual must overpower the desire and hunger for what's physical. Let me say that one more time. The desire and hunger for what's spiritual must overpower the desire and hunger for what's uh, physical. On a daily basis. Somebody say every day. See there's something different about a person who's hungry for the things of God. You know in America we don't even know what hunger is. You know, we, we go without eating one day. Right? Come on. You don't know how to act. Come on somebody. You're hungry right now. You don't know how to act. You want to go downstairs. Hurry up, Pastor Manny. I'm hungry. See, hunger will get you off the ground and require you to do something. There's something about a person that's really hungry. I'm talking about spiritual hunger. I'm talking about desperately pursuing God. I'm talking about desperate, relentless faith pursuing God with hunger, with desire, with everything that you got this morning. Is that you? Ask your neighbor, are you hungry? And I ain't talking about food. Hallelujah. See, hunger will birth desire and desire will cause you to get desperate. See, Psalms 107 uh, verse 9, write it down. It says this, for he who satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Psalms 37 verse 4 says this, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust him and he will act. That's Bible this morning. See, when you're desperate for God, even just his fragrance causes hunger. Even just his presence causes hunger. Even just his word, even just, just, oh, God. are you hungry this morning? See, this doesn't happen overnight. I understand. I understand relentless faith, having great faith just doesn't happen like that. I understand that. It's a process. Say a process. There has to be many steps involved, and that's why we're taking you step by step. That's why this month we're focusing on faith. That's why we're creating these moments of faith to get you to trust God some more, throw off them garments, come on somebody, throw off that stuff, get rid of those people, and start stepping out and trusting God by faith. It's a process, say a process. It's a continual development involving many changes. A method of doing something with many faith steps involved. There's a process for your faith, for your miracle, for your blessing. It doesn't happen instantaneously. Your faith doesn't go from here to there. But you'll have faith steps. Are you with me this morning? But here's the thing. you got to be patient in the process. Some of you, we don't have any patience. Like this morning, I had no patience this morning. Chito would tell you wherever he's at. I had this car in front of me, and he was just creeping, man. I'm like, hello! Let's move. Get out the way. Have you ever been there? Some of you were there this morning. I hope you didn't do anything bad. So I'm, 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 boom, I'm just getting closer. Boom, hello. I go, look, okay, nobody in front of you, buddy. Come on. How many know what I'm talking about? You ever had those drivers behind you, like me, those crazy drivers? And I'm, I'm going this way, and then I'm going this way, and well, hello, right? And, I, and Chito's next to me. 
He's just checking me out. Come on, somebody. Right, my son. He's like, okay, dad, stay in the spirit. You're preaching this morning. I know what he was thinking. I said, all right, praise God. I said, well, God's doing a work. Hallelujah. And I just stayed behind him real calm. I, I even said, I go, God's doing a work right now in my life. He's, he's working on my faith and my patience. Right? But you ever been there? Sometimes we're not patient. The process, let the process happen. Let it take form in your life. You, you got to start small. Tell your neighbor, start small. See, the last a couple weeks ago, we did, what do we do? United We Can, and you didn't start small. A dollar a day? That's small. Why did we, did we just do that just to do that? No. Start small. A dollar. Give up that Doritos. Give up that Starbucks. Give up that dollar. We started small. A dollar a day. And, 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 and I think we got a report. It was only a few people. Faith. Somebody say faith. If you can't trust God for a dollar, what are we doing, guys? What are we doing? What are we doing here? What's happening here? Start small. Step out in faith in the small things. Just, okay, you know what? This year, I'm never missing church. How about that one? Yeah, that takes faith. This year, I'm there every Friday and every Sunday and every life group. I'm never going to miss this whole year. 365 days, I'm not going to miss church. Tell your neighbor, start small. That takes faith. And God will honor that faith. Then pretty soon you start it small. Then it's like God says, okay, now go to women's convention. Oh, come on, ladies. Clap for that one. Oh, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. But I can't. Why? Because I don't have no. Hello, somebody. Where's your faith? If I were to tell you that, if I were to tell you going to the Beyonce concert, you'd get there. All of a sudden, you get money from hey, oh, auntie, uncle, tia, can I borrow this, borrow that, give me this, right? When we want it and we're desperate, we will find a way to get it. That's faith. That's faith. Can you have the same faith for the same faith you have for the world? How much more for God? How much more for Jesus? You got to have some faith this morning. But you got to let the process happen. It's like the caterpillar. Let me, let me just read to you about the caterpillar because this is pretty cool. I was studying on the caterpillar. You know, the caterpillar, he makes himself his own cocoon. It's called, it's a place of metamorphosis. It's a place where death happens to that caterpillar. The caterpillar grows and grows until one day it spins itself a sick coverlet, a cocoon. Somebody say a cocoon. A harder popa that dangles off a twig. And inside that cocoon, the caterpillar starts to shrink away. They shed their skin. Their organs actually dissolve. And their insides turn to mush. And their cells literally die. See, that's the process of transformation. We need to die. Oh, that, does that hurt this morning? We need to die. We need to die to the flesh, die to the things of the world, die to those things that we do not want in our life. Tell your neighbor, it's time to die. When's the last time you died to your flesh and came alive to the Spirit? That's a hard thing to do, huh? Oh, Pastor, man, don't you understand? Yes, I do. When I was a kid, I was telling Vetti class the other day. When I was a kid, there was, I seen a, there was an egg. You know, baby egg fell, fell out of the tree. And I was, don't judge me on this one. Come on. And, and I seen the egg, and it looked like the baby chick was trying to get out. You know, ever see that? They're, they're just fighting their way. They're trying to fight their way out. And I go, oh, baby chick, oh, cute, come on. And I'm there, and I get a little stick, you know, I get a little stick. I'm like six years, seven years old. I remember, though. And I, get, and I go down, and I say, oh, the baby chick, he's dying. He needs to get out. And I start picking at the egg, you know, breaking it. 
And his little leg is coming out. He, I go, oh, he's getting happy. He's coming out. He's coming, right? And I start breaking the egg, and I break it open, and, and he comes out. I say, okay, chicky, fly, go, go. And he's just looking at me all sad. His leg is kicking. You know. His neck is twitching. So oh, come on, chicky, get up. Get your wings. Go. Fly away. You know, pretty soon, you know what happened? It died. Somebody say, oh. So I just kicked it and walked away. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Don't judge me. Come on, somebody. You know, you ever been six before? Come on. <laughs> but you know what happened? That egg and that shell was meant to make it stronger. I ruined the process of transformation. And that egg and that shell was meant, it, it, it might have took a day, it might have took a, a week, who knows. It was, it was up there, it accidentally fell out. And as it's kicking and fighting, and it looks like it's, not, it's dying, but really it's living. It's getting stronger. And by the time it breaks free, it goes through the process. Their arms and their legs are strong enough so they can fly. See, when we ruin the process of our faith by not stepping out, we can die spiritually. Every opportunity that you get to exercise your faith, do it. You got to do it, church. I've been in your seats. I know I had to do it. It hurt. I didn't want it. It didn't look right. It just didn't make sense. My bank account never added up. I said, how could they ask me for this again and again? We're, you know what we're doing? We're getting you through the process of faith. Come on, that's a good place to give the Lord a good hand of praise. You think that we just do it just to do it? No, we're here to grow the church, to grow you spiritually, to get you strong enough so you can fly. So one day you can stand up there and say, I remember when they pledged, I gave, man, I was shaking in my boots. My wife hit me. She said, don't give that $100. But my faith was being tested, and I knew if I couldn't trust God for $100, how could I trust him for my son and my daughter? How can I trust him for my marriage? How could I trust him for my life? And you stretch your faith muscles. And you step out. And look, look at you use these moments to change, to die. Die to yourself. Are you with me this morning? How many, come on, give the Lord a good hand. The children of Israel, on their way to the promised land, they had to go through the desert. God allowed them to go through the desert. The promised land was actually closer. They could have they got there, the Bible says, in a few weeks. It took them 40 years in the desert because they didn't get it when God was moving in their life, when their faith, when it was critical in their life to operate in faith. The little tests, right, they couldn't pass the little tests. See, in the early stages of salvation, those faith tests are so critical because they show us that God is real. That God is able, that God will provide, that God will come through. But as we throw, grow and mature, because I see a lot of mature Christians in here this morning. And those faith tests come our way again, right? Because of the waves and the challenges of the world and in life have got us to this place that we can't even operate in the little faith that we once did before. Why is that? 
Their faith has been uh, shaken. Some of us broken. Our faith has been shattered. Our faith is not the same that it used to be. Why? Some of us are sitting there and say, I, I, I hear what Pastor Manny's saying, but I have no faith. None. I'm dry. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm wore out. It's time that we get relentless again for God. Come on, church. It's time to engage in the invisible again like you used to engage in the invisible. You didn't see it. It didn't look possible, but you still did it. Come on, Adam. Come on up. We must take ourselves from desire to discipline when it comes to faith transformation. From desire. We got the desire. You got the desire. It's in you. I know it's in you. I know what I'm talking about this morning. You got the desire. It's there. But now you got to discipline yourself when it comes to to faith transformation. And you got to know that you're never alone. Come on. Clap for Jesus. Clap. Come on. Put your hands together. I want you to clap for Jesus. Clap. Come on. Keep clapping for Jesus. Come on, worship team. Keep clapping for Jesus as they make their way. Come on. Keep clapping. Don't stop clapping for Jesus. Because he's working his spiritual work. Faith muscles. As you clap, he's strengthening your faith muscles right now. He's given you the faith to trust him again, to believe him again, to know he's with you, that you're not alone. Great story. It's a guy that fell in a hole. Fell in a hole. Deep hole, couldn't get out. He's looking up. And by him goes a doctor. Doctor looks down in the hole and poor guy writes out a prescription, throws it in the hole and walks away. Next person walks by is a priest. Priest looks down, gives him the sign of the cross. And walks away. So the guy says, hey, is anybody up there? I need some help. I'm in this hole. Then his friend Joe is walking by. Joe looks down. Jumps in the hole. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Why are you jumping in this hole? Now we're both stuck in the hole. That's you're my friend. Joe tells him, I'm here to remind you that you're not alone. And by the way, I've been here before and I know the way out. Come on, somebody. I know the way out. I know how to get out. Let's all stand. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> In this moment of faith, you got to know, church, you're not alone. You're not alone. Just raise your hands. Come on, because God is moving right now. God is, he's activating your faith. He's activating your faith again. Some of you close your eyes. Raise your hands. Father, we worship you this morning. And many are here this morning and it's been difficult. It's been a battle. It's been a fight. But this morning, Father, you're taking me through this process. And you're telling me again that you're with me, God. That you'll never leave me, that you never left me, that you'll always be there. And maybe I didn't operate in faith like I should, but this morning I'm making a commitment this morning to have some faith and to trust you again. They're going to sing this song, and I want you to step out of your seat. 
all of us just come. 